Good afternoon, preppers. Welcome to Goshen Prepping. When we look at a nuclear attack, or even more specifically the fallout, understanding how to protect yourself from it comes into three categories, time, distance, and shielding. Let's take a look at all three. First, time. We're not really going to look at the blast itself. When it comes to the blast, obviously you're looking at impact. Of course, there's radiation there. But in reality, that's the least of your worries for the fact that the blast or even the superfire that's going to develop probably afterwards is going to probably be your main enemy. Fallout, however, is a different story. And fallout is so radioactive and so lethal, you have to take actions to make sure that you're not caught in it. We're looking at about 24 hours after detonation. That's actually when the fallout is the most radioactive coming back down to Earth. And specifically, if you're outside when that fallout hits, you're not immediately dead yet, first off. You, you do have hope, but you need to get in and actually take shelter. Your best thing to do, by the way, is go to your front door, strip off all your clothes, be very alarming to your neighbors, hopefully they're not outside either, and get all that off you, brush out of your hair, everything you can, and go straight into the shower. You need to wash it off with just soap and water. Lots and lots and lots of soap and water. Shampoo is fine too, but you don't want conditioner. And you don't want any type of lotions either. Just soap and water is your best thing. And you don't want to simply just wash your hair like this. It'll come right down on your face, especially if you have your eyes and your mouth open. You want to be able to put your head back and wash it down that way. Now, when it comes to your mouth and your eyes, I want you to understand your skin. Your skin's amazing. It doesn't let things in. It's an amazing protector preventing things from getting in. So if you do, if you do get fallout on your arm, and there's no cuts on your arm, mind you, you're not gonna get the radiation inside of you, and that's actually the most dangerous thing. You have to keep the radiation outside of you. Because if you're standing next to a radioactive source and the radiation's passing right through you, you're not actually becoming radioactive. That radioactivity is not coming inside of you. But if you actually open your eyes up while you're washing your hair, follow it gets in your arm, you have a cut, now that radioactive material is getting inside of you, and that radioactive material is putting out radiation, a constant dose on you. And that's why we look at time, because the longer you actually have radiation going through your body, the more dangerous it is. If you actually just have a quick burst of radiation, I mean, granted, if it's not like super mega powerful from like a detonation, that's not near as detrimental as standing outside a fallout where it's constantly putting radiation through you. And the more radiation that goes through you, the better chances it's going to at least just kill you right away cause damage to your organs, or in the long run, cause cancer. So wash it all off, get it all down the drain, make sure every hair part of your body really gets washed off. But old school thinking was, they would come through and scrub you with a scrub brush. You ever seen those old movies? That's how they first did it. But then they realized, they thought, by the way, the fallout was actually getting into your skin. So they would scrub off the outer layer of your skin. That was their objective. But then they realized, oh, we're actually causing open wounds inside of you. And therefore, we're getting radio radioactive material inside of you. And we decided that's a bad idea quickly. So you want to actually scrub really well. Not scrub your skin, but wash off everything. Get it out of your hair, out of your eyebrows. Do not let it get in your mouth. Do not let it get in your eyes. Do not let it get into other holes that you have in your body and get it off as much as possible. Now, that first hour in the radiation is by far the most dangerous when it comes. Now, I mean, we're talking about 24 hours after the detonation. We're not talking about the first hour after the detonation, but 24 hours later, that first hour, here comes the fallout. By far, that's the most lethal part of the fallout. We're looking at 55% of the radiation will be reduced just after that first hour. So the amount of radiation that first hour is incredible. And then after the first 24 hours, we're looking at 80% of the radiation decreasing. Government tells you you can actually leave after about a day. Some other websites say seven days. I'm telling you right now for me and my family, we're not leaving our house for a month. I'm, we're going to stay in for 30 days because some of that radiation is going to be sticking around for a long, long time. And I would like to actually have it so rain washes a lot of it away. The radioactive decay and the half life has actually been depleted it. I just want to make sure because even though it may not be hurting you now, you know how it is. Radiation over a long period of time is definitely one of the biggest things that causes about causes cancer. We'll talk about why that happens later on in a different video, but just understand long-term effects is something you need to think about as well. Number two, distance. I think people think about shielding more than they do distance. And of course, we'll get to shielding in a minute. But the distance from the radioactive source is so vital. But it's so difficult because, of course, you can't see the radiation. And here I am right next to this wall. And if there's fallout right outside this wall, We'll talk about shielding in a minute. That, follow, that radiation is getting right in and zapping me. But the further you get from that wall, distance is actually one of the biggest th 
keys to make sure you don't get exposed to too much radiation. The best way to understand it is a flashlight. So if I, of course, put my hand right next to the flashlight, it's really bright. But as I bring it out, the amount of light on my hand is less and less and less. And what we see is not linear, but exponential. The further you get from that source of radiation, or in this case, light, it actually exponentially decreases to the point where obviously you don't have to go super far from the fallout, but you need to get yourself some distance between you and that fallout. Now with that, if you're caught out in the fallout and you're in your car, the distance right there, of course, you literally have fallout right above your head on top of the metal of that car. And in your mind, that's where the shielding comes in. You think, oh, well, I've got metal there. That metal is going to protect me. Not even close. Being in your car is one of the worst places you can be. I mean, obviously, you don't want the radiation falling on your head. At least it does that. But remember, that first hour is actually the most lethal. And as it's falling on top of your car, if you're in a car for 30 minutes, you're like, oh, at least I had my car. It's not going to protect you. You must get distance. So if you see a nuclear detonation trying to quickly get into a building, we'll talk about uh, how far in the building in just a second, but you at least need to get some cover because that car is not going to be even close to adequate enough. Now, something with roofs and walls, obviously, is what you want, clearly. But when it comes to the roof and walls, distance from those roof and walls is actually the key. So if your house is this big, you being right in the center of the house is what you want to shoot for. You do not want to be anywhere near the walls. Now look at the roof too. If you actually have a house and you think, oh, look how far I am from the side, but it's actually a flat roof house, that radiation is right here. It's right above your head. So you want to be able to get away from the radiation and you have to look at it all three dimensionally. I'm going to get me right from the sides this way, the sides this way, from the roof. You want to be able to get as deep inside the structure as possible. That's how you're going to get your best distance. Now, specifically, when we talk about basements, they're actually great because if you have a submerged basement, by the way, we're not talking about like a half basement. We'll talk about that in a second. But it's a completely submerged basement. It should actually block 90% of the radiation coming in your house. Now, same thing, still be in the center of the house in the basement, not toward the edges, but 90% is actually pretty acceptable. For regular walls and such, we're only talking about a few percent. I mean, some studies actually say up to 60% removed, but I'm telling you right now, I don't think that's even close to being the case. That radiation passes right through the walls of your house like it's nothing. It's not very dense. And again, we'll talk about shielding in a second. But you know what? At least it's better than nothing. It's better than your car. And you want to be able to protect yourself again, especially during that first hour, which is most vital. Now, if you're actually like in an apartment building, surprisingly, you'll actually do pretty well because you actually have some distance, quite a bit of distance from the sides, mind you, because there's usually multiple apartments. And often we'll see apartment buildings being buildings themselves. So if you're like in a 10-story building, you being on the bottom is one thing, but you don't want to be above probably the fifth floor. Fifth floor up, you have radiation on top and radi radiation's on the side. So think about this. If you think that actually being close to your walls in your house is bad, we recommend that if you're on the fifth floor of a 10-story building, five floors, five floors is really not enough. You want to make sure you get away from five floors. So if you're like in a 30-story building, anywhere from the 10th to 20th floor, you should be just fine. But again, toward the center, away from the windows. Number three, shielding. So again, talking about distance real quick. Obviously, if this wall has fallout right on the other side of it, I need to get away from it. In our mind, it gives us a false sense of security because this wall here, you think it's actually nice and thick. I mean, it actually mostly drowns out the neighbor's noises and all those things happening on the outside. It's not even close. You actually have to have thick, thick material. It literally gives you a false sense of security. Uh, it kind of reminds me of when I used to go backpacking, like in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. Unless you're going to have rain, we wouldn't even actually have a tent. And you think, well, what, is, what about bears? We'd see bears all the time. The thing is, that bear's going to rip right through your tent in two seconds and it actually makes it worse because, well, out of sight, out of mind. I don't see the bear coming up in my tent, so I must be safe. Not at all. In fact, it's more dangerous. So this wall gives you that false sense of security. Don't think it's even close enough to give you shielding away from that radiation. It's not. So being in your house, of course, that's your first step, but you have the distance, but the shielding and how thick your walls and everything are at, you need to take into account. Again, the walls, even if you have a cement house, you actually have to have very thick, heavy cement in between you and that radiation. So again, I'll say it again, distance is your key. Don't think about your, your walls of your house being enough. Again, basements are ideal, not because of the concrete so much in the basement, even though that helps too, but because the dirt, because we're, again, we're talking about a submerged basement. If you're talking about most people's basements, where it only comes up to like maybe your chest, 
That actually could be even worse because guess what? As you're walking around that basement, there's practically no shielding between your head and all that fallout. Obviously, it could be very dangerous and detrimental. So don't think that half basements or even three-quarter basements are going to give you more protection. In fact, they're going to give you more of that false sense of security. Also, I've heard people talk about too, let's go ahead and, and this is like all around the prepping community, by the way, I'm just going to take a table and I'm going to make a little table for it and put all my cans around it. And that's going to protect me. Look, if you want to build that table and can for in the center of your house, because you have the distance and you want to have a little bit more false security, then by all means do it. But the problem is by teaching that information, it makes people think that their table and the cans are going to stop that radiation. Not even close. This wall won't stop it. That concrete wall in your basement won't stop it if there's no dirt on the outside. It's the thickness and heavy, heavy materials that's going to stop it. We're talking about very thick too. Because even more specifically, you actually need to have 6.6 .6 feet of concrete to completely stop that radiation. Even then, a little bit will still get through, but it's at that point negligible. Six feet of concrete or 12 feet of dirt. 12 feet. And people think, well, I'm just going to go ahead and get lead to line my house, and that'd be great. Let's get some lead. 1.3 feet of lead. 1.3 feet of metal. You couldn't even lift that. So I want you to understand the shielding part of it. Do not go into that false sense of security. Do not think that by building your like a little can fort, remember your car is not even thinking enough to do it. You, the shielding for you and what you're looking at is not going to work very well for you. Maybe you actually build some kind of fallout bunker and you put in six feet of concrete. And again, you can actually go into detail even more so about what you specifically want to do as far as that thickness goes. But that, that's not what we're getting into here. I don't want you to get into the false sense of security to think that your house is going to give you shielding. It won't. It won't. The only thing in your house that might is if you actually have a completely submerged basement or if in an apartment building, then the distance comes into play. That's what you're looking at. Now, if you do build a fallout shelter, one last thing you need to keep in mind is this. A lot of people will dig a hole. They think this way. They don't think three-dimensionally. Yeah, the fallout's not coming in this way. And they'll actually put like some boards across and maybe like a couple inches of dirt to make their bunker kind of disappear. Remember, we need 12 feet of dirt. You're a couple inches of dirt. You're two feet of dirt. You're standing here. Here's the dirt. Here's the fault right on top of that. You're getting a major dose of radiation. And again, you don't even think about it. And it's going right onto your head. You need to dispel these false sense of security. You need to find a place in the center of your house, in the center of the basement, and you need to actually have thick, thick materials like concrete is your, probably your best bet to be able to try to stop it. Uh, back in the 50s, a lot of people would actually push dirt up to their uh, basement walls to try to make that extra. And that would work great too. But of course, it kind of messes up your landscaping, doesn't it? So there's one more addition to our prepping series. And I do want to point this out. This is a really neat book, Nuclear War Survival Skills. This actually came from research straight from the Oak Ridge Nuclear Laboratories, which is like top notch as far as understanding nuclear. And it's funny because I actually had some followers say to pick this book up. And I was like, well, my knowledge I already got from the military and stuff anyway. But I picked it up and glanced through it the other day. I had it for like months, but I finally glanced through it. It's really good. It's a great book. So if you're looking for a really good book to help you with everything when it comes to nuclear, even your fallout bunker, I'll put a link below for this book. All right. But anyways, if you haven't gone through the rest of our nuclear prepping series, make sure you go through it, watch all the videos. And especially in these per perilous times that we have, we want to be prepared. Thank you for watching.